Insects can be beautiful, deadly, venomous, and villainous. And I've got a deck that's going to put all that to use, and I'm going to show it to you right now. Hello, Oathbreakers, and welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb YouTube channel. I have missed your faces. Today, I've got an insect tribal deck starring the planeswalker Gris the Hunger Tide out of Modern Horizons 2. Gris is an itty bitty bug that will show up on a plane and start collecting all the other insects there and take over and build a massive swarm. Our deck is looking to do the same. Gris costs one, a black and a green, so he's a Vilgari planeswalker that starts with three loyalty. If we plus one him, We'll put a 1-1 counter on him, make a 1-1 one, one insect creature token, and mill a card. If we mill an insect, we get to repeat that process. It's important to note that uh, its ultimate is minus 5, and when we alt it, each opponent will lose life equal to the number of creature cards on graveyard. So if we use the plus 1 and mill a massive amount of insects into our graveyard, we have a win condition printed right on our planeswalker. His minus two is to sacrifice a creature. When we do, we destroy target creature or planeswalker. That is actually important to the deck because a first ability can often net us at least two loyalty a turn. So every once in a while, it's not a bad idea to use this removal because it's one of the only removal pieces in the deck, actually. Our signature spell is Forever Young. For one in the black, it's a sorcery that lets us put any number of creature cards on top of our library and draw a card. The reason this is very, very important to the deck as if we've milled a bunch of insects into the creature card, yeah, if we've milled a bunch of insects into our graveyard, and we can put them back on top of our library and have Gris mill all of those insects with no lands or interruption again, it's going to get net us a massive amount of loyalty and one one bodies on the field. The fact that it also lets us draw a card is just gravy on top. All of the creatures in this deck are going to be insects, and almost all of the cards in this deck are going to be creatures. Each one does serve a function in the deck, but they are mostly replaceable, so I'm going to try to go through this section pretty quick. First off, we have Bayou Dragonfly. It's a 1-1 with Flying and Swamp Lock, so it has two forms of evasion, which is going to help us get damage through if we have trouble with any of our other wind conditions. Flight Beetle has protection from green, and opponent's creatures can't have 1-1 one -one counters placed on them. That is actually kind of an important hate piece that probably will get removed. Bloodline Pretender is a 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, we're going to choose Insect as our creature type, and whenever another Insect enters the battlefield, we'll put a 1-1 one -one counter on Bloodline Pretender. It's important to note that he also counts as an Insect for the purpose of our deck. Bond Beetle for 1 green. When it enters the battlefield, we put a 1-1 one -one counter on a creature. Brain Maggot lets us look at our opponent's hand, exile a non-land card from it, and it'll stay exiled until they remove this creature. This is another piece of removal in the deck. Brood Hatch Nantuko for one and a green. When it's dealt a damage, we create that many 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens. We want to swarm the board, so we don't mind this even a little bit. Carrion Beetles for one black. If we pay two and a black and tap it, we can exile three target cards from a single graveyard. So this is a great way to hate on our opponent's graveyard strategies or deck. Caustic Caterpillar. Caustic Caterpillar, we can pay one and a green in sacrifice and destroy target artifact or enchantment. Chain Flail Centipede is a 2-2 two -two that gets plus two plus only attack, or we can equip it on one of our creatures and do the same. Changeling Outcast is unblockable, but it also can't block. When Circuit Mender enters the battlefield, we gain two life. When it leaves the battlefield, we draw a card. Dross Hopper has Sacrifice a Creature. It gains flying till end of turn. If we sacrifice a bunch of creatures to Dross Hopper or our other sack outlet in the deck, and then we use our signature spell to reset our library and put all the creatures back on top, we can actually have some amazingly big turns. It's basically also another 2-1 with evasion we can use to get our combat damage through. Dredge Beetle for one in a green has Scavenge. If we pay five in a green and we remove it from our graveyard, we'll put, you know, two 1-1 one -one counters, or I guess, yeah, two 1-1 one -one counters on any creature. So we're not probably going to get a lot of use out of that. The Scale Crawler for one in green says when it enters the battlefield, we put a 1-1 one -one counter on a creature. Each creature we control with a 1-1 one -one counter on it has Trample. Again, just evasion to get our damage through. Fog of Gen... 
Fog of Gnats, I was gonna say Gnats because my brain reads that that way. For two black, it's a woman with flying, we can pay one black to regenerate. For our work colony, for one in a black camp block, at the beginning of our upkeep, we put a woman counter on, we lose one life. So this can become a massive body, but it is also very dangerous to us, so having sack outlets on board is important with this card. Guardian and Glade Walker for one in a green is a changeling. When it enters the battlefield, we put a woman counter on target creature. X Parasite for one mana. If we pay X in either two life or a black mana, we can remove X counters from target permanent. For each counter removed this way, Hex Parasite gets plus one plus out till end of turn. This is a great card for removing counters from dangerous creatures, but also for removing loyalty from creatures uh, from Planeswalkers. So it's one of our only other Planeswalker hate cards in the deck other than our commander. Iron Shirt Beetle for one in the green lets us put a woman counter on a creature when it enters the battlefield. Kazandu Nectar Pot, whenever we land fall, we get to gain a life. Cruel Harpooner, for one in a black, is a 3-2 with reach and undergrowth. When enters the battlefield, we choose up to one target creature uh, with flying we don't control. It's going to get plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in our graveyard, and then Cruel Harpooner fights that creature, so it's just very specifically flying removal spell, but it'll still help us in a lot of cases. If nothing else, giving it plus X plus O is still pretty awesome. Loam Larva for one in a green is a 1-3. When it enters the battlefield, we're going to search our library for a basic land card, reveal it, shuffle, and then put that card on top. This is kind of a ramp. One possible, we probably actually don't want to play this because we want to make sure we don't have lands on top of our library when we're triggering Thrist because it'll immediately stop us from doing what we want to do. Mass Vandal for one in a green is a 1-3 changeling. When enters the battlefield, we may exile a creature card from our graveyard. If we do, we can destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. Moldgraf Millipede for four and a green is a 2-2. Two, two. When enters the battlefield, we mill three cards and then put a 1-1 one, one counter on Moldgraf Millipede for each creature card in our graveyard. We're gonna have a massive amount of creature cards in our graveyard as often as possible. Mortician Beetle for one black says whenever a player sacrifices a creature, we may put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, so we are running a couple sack outlets. Then Tuco Shade for two black is a 2-1, and we can play one black to give it plus one plus one till end of turn, so it can become a big beater in the late game. Then Tuco Tracer for one in a green, when it enters the battlefield, we may put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Nissian Horn Beetle for one in green says at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control another creature with power four or greater, we put a one one counter on it. Plague Beetle has Swamp Rock Walk. Scoop Mob says at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control five or more lands, we put a put four one one counters on Scoop Mob. It's just a really good card that I loved playing with back in uh, the first Zendikar. Skittering Heart Stopper. Uh, we can give a Death Touch if we're willing to pay a black. Sky Lasher has Flash, can't be countered, has Reach and Protection from Blue. That is a lot of stuff this card can do. Spring Leaf Avenger for 3 and 2 green, or Ninjutsu for 3 and a green. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, return target card from our graveyard to our hand. Sir Conrad the Grim for 3 and 2 black. He's one of the only non-insect creatures in the deck, and there's a reason he is here. He is a 5-4, and whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into our graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves our graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. So every time we mill with Gris, he's going to burn our opponents for one damage for each creature we mill. Every time we use Forever Young, our signature spell, to put all those creatures back on top of our library, he's going to deal our opponents one damage for every single creature we turn that way. He is an amazingly big piece. Also, for one in a black, each player mills a card. That's a good way for us to support our opponents and maybe trigger that one damage whenever we need it. So in light game, if we have a lot of mana, we might just want to pour it into Sir Conrad sometimes. Virus Beetle, for one in a black, says when it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. Viscera Seer, which is our other sacrifice outlet, says sacrifice a creature, scry one, uh, look at the top card of your library. You may put a card, you may put that card on the bottom. So if you've ever scribed before, you know how that works. The main reason Viscera Seer is in this deck is when we mill successfully and we create the 1 1 token and put 1 loyalty on Gris, we can sack that 1 1 token, see what the next card is before we mill it, and if it's a land, 
we, or it's going to be one of our non-insect creatures, we can put it on the bottom of our library and hope that we're going to hit another insect instead. So this can help clean up our draws and make sure the Gris is going to combo as often as possible. Next we have Woodland Changeling for one in a green. It's a 2-2 Changeling, so it's just kind here because it's a, a decent insect body. Xanthid Swarm has flying, and whenever the defending player, <laughs> sorry, whenever it attacks, defending player can't cast spells this turn. So this is a great way to stop player interaction. You may want to attack with Xanthid Swarm, and then do all your spells in your second main phase so that you can't get countered or otherwise removed. So. We're going to be running 10 forests and 10 swamps, and that is actually the deck. It's an incredibly simple kind of uh, combo deck built around what Grist wants to do, which is to mill a whole bunch of insects, create an army, and burn out our opponents. I hope you guys have liked this deck. It is one of these ones that uh, is very easy to build. It is very um, game-oriented, so I think a lot of people are going to like this. It's not a bad starting place in Oathbreaker. Uh, below me is my uh, my subscribers here on YouTube, all of you great people who drop and watch these videos. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. If you subscribe, you get added to this list. I've got my patrons over here. They're the amazing people who help make these videos possible for the channel. I'll also put a video up here on the end card. If you guys got any questions, comments, or concerns about today's deck, please hit me below, and I hope you have a great day, and thank you for stopping by.